Hi, everyone. Welcome to the timingresearch.com Analyze Your Trade, episode number 164 uh, for July 6, 2021. My name is David Cosmeter. I'm the creator of timingresearch.com, and today we will be talking about your trade ideas. <laughs> so uh, we are we are uh, recording this at 4 p.m. Eastern time, and today I have arranged for Jake Bernstein to join us again. So we're going to get an update mm -hmm. on his uh, his ideas about the market. And the option professor is back to moderate. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him. Okay, great. Uh, everybody, I hope uh, everyone is here with their notepads because we have a very big day today. And we also have one of the best guests you could ever have for this kind of a day. Um, not only the stock market, but uh, there's been a lot of volatility in the commodity markets. There's a lot of talk about inflation. And so uh, we're going to get through some stocks, but uh, we definitely want to have our guest give us his opinion on what he thinks about inflation and the commodity sector as well. So again, uh, for people who are not uh, familiar with Jake Bernstein, uh, uh, he's been in the business for a very long time. He's extremely uh, well-respected and knowledgeable. So we're all very lucky to hear his views. Uh, I, for one, have uh, always thought his views were very, very, uh, very, very helpful. So Jake, uh, for the people who are not aware of yourself, could you just give a quick background and a little bit about the company? Sure, absolutely. I've been trading for 52 years. I probably sound like it. I've written 45 books. I've been on all the major TV shows, including Wall Street Week, CNBC, lectured extensively throughout the world. I'm a real trader. I trade what I teach and I teach what I trade. I'm not a day trader, although I've written four of the best-selling books on day trading for McGraw-Hill. I think day trading is not a good idea these days, even though a lot of people do it. I'm purely technical in my work. I use fact-backed rules-based trading. So if the facts are not there, there's no trade for me. The rules are clear. I'm completely mechanical and completely technical. I think that's about all. I can sure. Really right now. sure. And again, at the end of the broadcast, people uh, will have an opportunity to get a hold of you and get uh, more in-depth uh, information on exactly what you're doing. But the markets are very exciting because we obviously are at a very high point on the S&P and we're at a very uh, key point, it looks like, on some of the uh, inflationary news as well as the bond market making different moves. So there's a lot to talk about, but let's get through some of the stocks first. Uh, sure. The first one is uh, Domino's Pizza. And... Uh, Let's see what we think about Domino's Pizza, DPZ. Let's bring up the chart. I know it's fattening, but uh, that's about all I know about it, really. I hate their pizza. It's not really. <laughs> There's Domino's right there. We have a big, beautiful uptrend, regardless of the quality of the pizza. The stock exactly. <laughs> still strong. Yeah. On my moving average channel indicator, it turned bullish a long time ago. We're probably best off looking at the weekly chart. Yeah. Which is right here. Weekly chart very strong and remains quite yeah. bullish. Yeah. Uh, let me move this chart just a little bit to the right. Hold on a second. Still in a very strong bull trend. Yeah, this was a darling of the um of the COVID uh, and the heat of the COVID because obviously people were ordering to go and stuff like that. Then it looked like it took a pause and now it looks like it's right back on the bicycle, huh? No doubt about it. And we also have what's what I call a five bar pattern which is five consecutive weekly bars above the top of the moving average channel, a very bullish formation. And usually when you have this kind of a pattern, if you take the range from the highest high to the lowest low, and you project it onto the close of the last bar, you get a target that's equal to that amount, which was reached right over there. The silver uh, is in the bull market. This next one is a real big one because uh, it's in a sector that got whacked pretty hard here today. There's a lot of arguing at OPEC and uh, people are wondering if it's going to turn into a food fight where they start pumping a lot more oil. Uh, so anyway, this is USO and it had been doing quite well, uh, but uh, it has uh, come off here today. What are we thinking about USO? Just a pullback? It's just very hard to argue with a chart like this. Mm -hmm. Very bullish chart. Uh, in, crude, in terms of the stock itself, this is today, so it looks like it's recovered very nice. Oh, we still have Friday, so we need to update. So tell you what, why don't I update these charts while you while you talk for just a few minutes? Sure, so sure. And again, the energy sector is one of the big ones we're going to try to talk about after we get through some of these stocks, because uh, one thing that Jake is uh, very um, uh, knowledgeable on is obviously the commodity sector and, uh, and the stock index sector as well. Um, and 
you know, we saw um, agricultural products turn around quite a bit today. We've seen the energy products turn quite a bit. A little bit of a bounce going on in the metals. So there's a lot of exciting things going on in the commodity sector, particularly since we're in the second half of the year. So everyone should keep uh, their ears open uh, to hear what Jake has to say here, because when copper was way down, you know, he was bullish. When the soybeans were way down, he was bullish. And so he has been very helpful to people. Um, I'm sure his subscribers are very happy as well uh, with the information that he can bring to you um, and his experience on uh, cyclical activity, seasonal activity, and other factors that come into play. So there's a lot, of, of, a lot of things going on. Do we have it updated now? Yeah, we should be okay. One of the things you want to be looking at in terms of market behavior is the ability of the market to recover the way it did today. Yeah. So we saw a very weak market earlier in the day. It got weaker throughout the session, but then toward the end of the day, it recovered very strongly. Now here's the up-to-date USO chart. It was down today, but still no damage done. Coming down to the bottom of the channel support, perfectly normal and reasonable correction. Yeah, so right now it looks like we're talking about a pullback in oil, not the end of the game. Not the end of the game, not, not by a long shot. There's just no indication of that right now. All right, let's look at Roku. Uh, that's been a wild one here in the last year. And uh, today, uh, what did we do today? It was up strongly today. Again, uh, this is one of the casualties of the interest rates spiking up in the Q1. And obviously, I think uh, this is probably a high P, um, high valuation. So, you know, when the rates go up, people start worrying about discounting these future earnings uh, based on the interest rates. That that fear has now been relieved a bit. And this is one of the beneficiaries, right? Well, here's the important thing in terms of technical behavior. The moving average channel, which consists of an eight day moving average of the high, I'm sorry, 10 high, eight low. When the channel gets narrow like this, you usually get a reaction down to support. Mm -hmm. The channel is a leading indicator. So the width of the channel got very narrow. And today we came right down to the bottom of the channel support and shot right back up again. Very bullish formation. So I don't think this move is over by a long shot, not even close. The uh, next one up is SUPN. And okay. that is... Uh... Pharmacy, Super the pharma, pharma, excuse me, it's a pharma company. Sure is. Not such a good looking chart. We've got one bar below the bottom of the channel. The indicator here, Williams is below its moving average. If we get a second day completely outside the bottom of the channel, the chart turns bearish. And actually this chart has gone nowhere in quite some time. It's just been basically a sideways market. Right. I like to look at the weekly and see if that's doing anything, but that's sure. not doing anything either. Basically a sideways market came down to weekly support today. So there's probably going to be a pop back to the top of the channel, but in terms of looking at a stock that's got good bullish momentum behind it or bearish momentum for that matter, there's, there's no there there. Well, the next one up is kind of a consumer staple, which means it generally is a kind of a boring stock, but it has a, a look like it wants to go higher a little bit. CL, Colgate Palmolive. Yeah, good old fashioned blue chip stock. Yeah. Still in a downtrend. Turned bearish right over here. Coming right up to resistance over here. But again, as a blue chip stock, I consider it to be an investment. If yeah. it's an investment, I'm looking at the weekly chart or the monthly chart. So the monthly is still in a very nice strong uptrend for quite yeah. some time now. Still right. in in a bull trend. You know, also I like to look and see if it's paying a dividend. So this stock is paying 2.1%, still better than the bank. Yeah. And a steady improvement on the principal. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Next guy up here is uh, Advanced Micro Devices, AMD. And uh, the CEO is kind of a hero to many people. Oh, yeah, she sure is. That's Lisa Sue, isn't it? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so uh, people are definitely uh, tying her their wagon to her car, whatever you call it. So the monthly chart is very bullish. The weekly chart is just breaking out to the upside again. The daily chart is still very bullish. There's not really much you can say here in the way of negativity, but that's usually the time to be careful. 
Yeah, the chip shortage seems to be continuing because um, uh, Daimler, ba uh, Benz, and uh, Jaguar announced that they were having problems uh, because of uh, additional chip shortages. It's actually pretty amazing the way a shortage can turn into an oversupply. <laughs> and very quickly, especially on a commodity-based thing like that. That's, that's, that's true for shortage is a shortage. Supposedly, this stock does good during a um, inflationary time or whatever. Uh, Caterpillar CAT, but I'm sure with the grains tanking today, uh, Caterpillar and other uh, John Deere's probably didn't fan, uh, fare too well because uh, their customers lost a lot of money today. I guess. But remember, a lot of these customers have already hedged their crops and have got money up the wazoo. So they've probably spent a lot of money. These orders have already been accounted for. Right. So right now, in terms of a daily, the stock is definitely in a downtrend. But in terms of the bigger picture, which is always something you want to look at, mm -hmm. it's a normal reaction in a big bull market that's been going on for some time to come. I see. So by changing the uh, the um, scope to a more longer term one, you can see that basically it might even be an opportunity down there. Oh, yeah. Still, still a great big bull market in CAT. And remember... Cat's not involved just in farming, it's involved in construction as well. Exactly. Well, uh, the small caps have a lot of, um, had a lot of oil shares in them. And so that might've been a problem for these guys. IWM is your uh, yep. proxy for the uh, 2000, uh, uh, Russell 2000. And it had been lagging uh, compared to the other ones. And today, I guess with the energy shares in there, they, uh, they didn't fare so good. Well, talk about a market that's not going anywhere. It's yeah, the small really, cap really gone nowhere for a long time except sideways. Now, look, if you're a trader, it's a trader's delight if your timing's really good. But most people can't effectively invest in a market like this because it's basically gone nowhere. Yeah, it seems like 230, 235 is a wall, um, concrete wall, and about 215 or so has uh, been the bottom or 200. So there you got about a $30 move, 30 point area. Okay. When it breaks out of there, you'll probably get a pretty good move, though, huh? Sure, it had a big run from here to here, but basically since all the way back here, which is uh, in February of 2021, it's gone completely sideways. Some uh, people think there's a lot of reopening stocks in there too that are supposed to do well, but uh, like you say, there's there's nothing too impressive here. All right, let's talk here about the metals because uh, it looked like they did uh, try to make lows in March and then uh, made some other lows here. Uh, and they've been trying to go back up. Um, is is New look? Newmont, NEM, uh, time okay. to jump on board there? One of my favorites. Let's check it out. Here's Newmont. No doubt we're in a downtrend on the daily. So it's a sell right now. Um, as an investment in metals, I'd be more inclined to look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart is negative as well. So I say we hold off on this one right now. Remember, in the metals, especially gold and silver, you usually make your lows in August to early September. So this is precursor to the seasonal decline. I wouldn't be in too big of a hurry to jump into ones like this. But having said that, the lower priced gold mining stocks are really good bargains, such as Hecla, um, Endeavor Silver, uh, Coeur d'Alene. These are pretty good ones. Also, Silver Wheaton, SLW is a pretty good one as well. How about KGC? How about uh, Kinross, KGC? KGC. And Yamana, uh, A A -Y. A Y. So there's KGC, similarly in a downtrend. And Yamana, right over here. So they're all looking pretty much the same. Again, I say be patient with the golds and the silver. They're going to work, but not for a while yet. So be patient. A question from the option side would be the call options in the, uh, like say the a uh, little bit out of the money here, or actually pretty much out of the money, the six and higher strikes going out till next January uh -huh. are going for pennies on the dollar. Is there a big move potentially by January of next year that would make those options turn from pennies to dollars? I do believe so. I think the big move is going to come between the second week of September into the latter part of October. So you got plenty of time. 
Yeah, time. Yeah. The uh, thing with the options, though, is obviously uh, when volatility and prices are low, they are at the best price. Exactly. And sometimes uh, the best way to stick it to the seller uh, when the premiums are extremely low is to buy as much time as possible so he can sweat bullets for a long period of time. True enough. And uh, that's one thing that I was looking at as far as the prices are concerned, because, you know, these people have abandoned like this Yamana and they've abandoned, like you said, some of those lower priced uh, metal stocks. And the ones that are optionable uh, look kind of interesting uh, for limited risk premiums going out six months a year. Correct. So it'd be uh, something to think about, you know, because uh, buy your straw hats in the uh, winter. Isn't that what Bernard Baruch said? Baruch, yeah, I believe so. One of the others that uh, I like to look at is wheat and precious metals, WPM. Sure. Good, good quality stock and definitely one of the stronger ones that you want to own if there's going to be a seasonal rally in gold later this year, which I think there will be. Yeah. That's why, uh, you know, sniffing around those uh, inexpensive calls, if you want to speculate, would be something to start looking around. Speculate? Uh, Who wants to do that? <laughs> limited risk speculation. Rather than bet on the bears, you know, right. bet on the metals, you know. <laughs> okay. uh, anyway, so you're talking about the QQQs, and uh, they obviously uh, uh, seems to be where the money's going. Uh, they want to get into the Amazons. You want to get into Apples. They want to get into Google and Facebook. And obviously, that's what these queues are all about. And uh, that's where the money flow seems to be going. Does it seem like it's uh, got a good support underneath? Oh, yeah. And today's recovery was extremely strong. Here's the daily chart right here. And that is an extremely bullish formation where you open at a new high. You sell off looks really bad, then later in the day it starts to recover and closes close, close to the high of the day. Very strong performance here. All right, the next one is Telephone, which was doing pretty well until they announced uh, some kind of a merger split or whatever they announced, I forgot. But whatever they did, they cut their dividend, which is the reason why most people own the thing in the first place. And so uh, it's been kind of a Telephone. It, had, it was up near the 35 area, and then it went down to 28. But, uh, but here's the thing. Even with the dividend cut, this stock is still yielding. Let me, let me get that one second. Yeah, what is it yielding? That's a good... good uh... Yield is 7.1% right over here. The annual rate is 2%, but the yield is 7%, which yeah. ain't, ain't so bad these days. Yeah. Plus, I mean, they may get in on this... Um you know, um, 5G stuff uh, like, uh, you know, T-Mobile is one, everybody loves T-Mobile, but uh, can these guys get into that game or what? I don't know. You know, it's hard to say. A lot of people have said some bad stuff about their management and their management has not made some very wise decisions. But um, again, you look at a chart like this, you see this kind of formation here, which is a huge reversal and a big gap on the chart. The gaps like that, and reactions like this are overreactions to the move to the overall center to the overall movement in the market. And I, I think there's some value to be had here. Yeah, the fact that they haven't really broken 28 after all the bad news was perceived as bad news. You know, uh, there's some there's some value to the uh, the 2750 2800 area. You know, you also notice how they recovered very strongly from all of this bad news, whatever the hell that was. Yeah, that's when they did the. Uh, change the dividend and they got connected right. with somebody else yeah so they've been down here a number of times and again looking at it from the monthly perspective you see this beautiful area of support here so i don't think they can drop much below 28 if someone's willing to be patient put it in a kid's retirement account a kid's a student a college fund or whatever it's definitely worth looking at from a longer term perspective they still got a lot of customers to market to for sure. Um, okay, next guy up here is Microsoft. A lot of people are looking at a 300 plus number on this stock. Uh, and this is where people are viewing safety nowadays. So uh, what are we thinking here on Microsoft? Very much similar to the triple Q chart. No surprise yeah. there. <laughs> exactly. Making new highs, no divergence. Still in an uptrend, approaching a seasonal move to the upside. So again, if you want to put your money on it, it's probably a good bet. Limited downside potential. Weekly chart is a thing of great beauty. The long-term monthly chart, you couldn't do much better than that. So 
Bottom line is, do you wait for a reaction to the bottom of the channel, which is the red line, or do you buy it now? And again, coming into the latter part of the year where things get a little bit dicey in September and October, right. be careful. I wouldn't chase any of these stocks right now. Uh, the next guy up is GLD. Um, one thing I noticed uh, that had me concerned about the metals when it ran up to about 2100 uh, last year was that the mining shares were nowhere near uh, the highs that they made in 2012 when the last time gold was up in that area. And so that was kind of a tell that maybe the gold prices would not last. And they obviously didn't last. We had a nice 20% drop. Yeah. Um, now, um, people who would rather do the bullion than the, than the actual shares, this would be their game. What do you think here? You know, as we said earlier, I really like the lower priced gold mining stocks. Mm -hmm. They don't have much to lose on the downside. Right. They're worth accumulating and dollar cost averaging on the downside on the way down. Mm -hmm. And eventually they will perform. So given the fact that gold made a new high, but the producers couldn't do it, it's very significant, as you said, a tell. So again, I wouldn't be ch chasing these markets. I would look to the big picture of the monthly chart, which I like to look at from time to time and say, hey, what is the, what is the current issue in terms of support? Believe it or not, I also like to look at the quarterly chart in the gold, which is a very beautiful chart in mm. terms of support. So I think we can probably buy later in the year GLD around the 150 to 160 area. So I wouldn't be in any big hurry, especially given the underlying seasonal weakness that we usually get at this time of the year. The March lows, would you say they're a line in the sand that you could uh, defend or do you think they are still vulnerable? So you would say March lows, you mean back here? Uh-huh, where we hit the yeah. lows down here, 1600 or something like that, 160. Yeah, I, think, I think that's a reasonable level of support and I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. That, that, that would generally probably hold? Probably hold. In fact, the way to find out is to go to the weekly chart and take a look at the weekly chart or the monthly chart. So we got monthly support down over here. These should be the March lows right about here. Hold on one second, let me fix that. Whoa, computer's going crazy. Hang on one second. So these should be the March lows. Yeah, that is the March low right over there. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised if that holds. But again, during this period of time, other than for extremely short-term trading, I would not be a willing participant in the metal, certainly not as an investment at this point, unless your time window is like a year or two. Right. So you're basically feeling along the lines of, you know, uh, this may have potential at the end of Q3 and into Q4, but between now and then, it could be choppy. Yeah, and let me say one more thing, if I may. I like the silver miners better than the gold. Okay. So if we go to the silver monthly chart, which is showing right now SIL, or we go to the weekly silver chart, which is right here, you can see the chart looks much better in terms of trend. So we're right now breaking the uptrend but we've got really good support at all of these lows over here. And again, if we go to the monthly chart, we see a very significant level of support because basically silver's gone sideways for a long time and we'll most likely find support down around here around the 40 range in terms of this stock. So don't, don't dismiss silver. Let's uh, get into Tesla. Um, that uh, probably had a really volatile day today, I would imagine. Let's check it out. Here's Tesla. And we'll go to the daily chart right here. And it definitely was a downer today, no doubt about it. Broke support, but no sell triggers at this point in time. Ultimately still a good stock, technically. I don't look at the fundamentals. I love yeah. my Tesla, it's a great car, but in terms of fundamentals, that's all I know. Yeah, well, a couple of things that are probably uh, got people a little nervous is the way China seems to be clamping down on things. And, uh, you know, that uh, makes people nervous when you have a company over there who, um, you know, is trying to make money over in China and get going in China. And then, you know, you get some pretty much political stuff that makes people nervous, I guess. Sure. And looking at Tesla from the really big picture. Yeah. It's a really beautiful chart. And as I mentioned before, when the channel gets narrow, stocks tend to react, but when the channel gets wide, like it is now, that's usually a precursor to a sharp move to the upside. So I would not be surprised 
contrary to all of the supposedly negative fundamentals or potentially negative fundamentals, right. to, to make a new all-time high in the next several months. Uh, next guy up is TWST. It's a bioscience company. Here we go. Twist Bioscience. That's a new one on me, but it's certainly a beautiful chart. There's the daily chart, came down to support today, found good support, trend remains mm -hmm. bullish. Buy trader all the way back here. Good stock, big picture. Had a beautiful run up, has given a lot of it back, but still a very strong stock all the way around. Uh, any other stocks you'd like to refer to now that uh, you're kind of keeping an eye on that are on the list, but uh, could be uh, yep. interesting? All right. Southern Peru Copper. Let me show it to you. We've talked about this one before. Well, it was a big winner last year. Yep. Recommended a couple of years ago and it was very, very low in price. Right. So here's the chart. I'm recommending looking at it on a weekly basis. So it's come down below support on a weekly basis, which means that it should find support monthly, which is exactly where it is right now. So here's that pattern we talked about again. Channel gets narrow. Stock reacts to the bottom of the channel. Channel mm -hmm. opens up wide. And that precedes a big move to the upside. So I don't think this move in copper is anywhere near over yet. How about a Viacom, V-I-A-C? It uh, started to get out of the chute. Then it's come right back down. But, uh, you know, they own uh, Paramount Studios and CBS. Yep. And so, you know, people are thinking there could be something going on in that. What do you think? Well, you tell me. <laughs> so in terms of a market that's gone nowhere, this is certainly it. Yeah. In terms of long-term value, again, depending on your time frame, looking two, three years down the road, yes, probably a good takeover candidate in one way or another. But in terms of right now, it's going nowhere, and it's going nowhere fast. Yeah, looks like it. Looks like it. Um. Any other ones that are kind of hitting you? Yeah, I want to look at this one here. This is a nice cheapie. Check this out. It's the ETF for coffee called Java, JVA. Let me get it up on the screen. Now, this one you got to be careful of because it's very speculative, but definitely worth looking at. Here it is, coffee holding. It's about five bucks a share. Very cheap stock. I'm looking at it from a weekly perspective. We started a weekly up move back all the way over here. Stock's gone up. And in the last couple of weeks, it's found support at the bottom of the channel. Depending on what you think about coffee, now I happen to be very bullish on coffee over the long term. Even though this one does not move tick for tick with coffee, it's an excellent, cheap, speculative stock if you like to do that kind of stuff. Another That's, one. I'm looking, okay, go on. Sure, sure. I'm looking at SGG which is a sugar ETF. I'll show it to you. Here it is. If you believe that we're going to get an inflationary market, the thing you want to look at is sugar. The bottom line is this. Nobody really needs sugar for anything. It certainly doesn't make you healthy. But so when disposable income goes up and inflation goes up, sugar prices tend to go up. And one of the best ways to participate if you're afraid of the futures is the ETF SGG. What about on the, on the, oh yeah, you got the sugar already there. Yeah. Sugar at SGG, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I was going to uh, try to go through um, a couple of the different commodities. And uh, if we could start out with the um, agricultural sector, uh, because for whatever reason, um, they sold off pretty dramatically today. I think we were 95 cents lower on the soybeans, which... Mm -hmm. So the question is kind of uh, from the school of, um, does that mean we are uh, finished with the move right now? Or does this mean we are going to, you yeah. know, maybe uh, have a further increase or what do you think? I think this move in the grains and the beans for right now is over. Yeah. News is out. The drought is basically in the market already. So I think all the bad news that would cause the market to go up, the bullish news is over and done with. To see this kind of a reaction in the beans, which I have not seen in a long time, is certainly very negative. Our work turned bearish 
all the way back here with an opportunity to sell the top of the channel right over here. So this is completely consistent with the down move. The one thing I would say is this, market sentiment, small trader sentiment showing at the bottom of the screen is extremely low. You will notice that when market sentiment was really high, in other words, 90% bullish on the small trader, mm -hmm. preceded the top of the market. So we have the exact opposite situation right now. Usually that means we get a short-term recovery but in terms of the really big picture, I think this move is over for the time being. We've seen it and it's been dramatic and it's been exciting and it's been fun, but it's basically over. The thing I would say is this, the big bull markets we've seen in the grains and the beans and the wheat, been an ideal opportunity for a lot of farmers to get out of the hole and market their crops. I'm not sure how many of them have actually taken advantage of this, but they should have. How's your commitment to traders looking on these grains? Well, let's check it out. So because me... uh, I, I'm using some long-term moving averages. And of course, I, have no, I had no interest in the beans above $15 because I was interested at 9, 10, and 11. But I see my moving averages come in um, on my 20 years. One year is at around 13, and the other ones are around 11. So we're getting close to the uh, one year. And uh, I was just wondering if there's any reason to believe that the one year uh, moving average at around 13 may hold. So here is the soybean chart, the long-term chart with the cycles. You can see that the smaller cycle has peaked, mm -hmm. the bigger cycle has peaked, and this green area represents commercial buying activity. There was a lot of commercial buying activity right at the bottom, preceding the bottom, but right now, there's been no buying commercial, commercial buying activity whatsoever. Yeah. So in spite of the fact that the small trader is extremely negative, the bottom line, no puns intended, is commercials are not participating in this. No. So let's take a quick look at the corn. Yeah, okay. which, you know, it, it either means we're going to go down further or it could mean we consolidate. But uh, what it doesn't mean is we're going back up to 1750. Correct. And again, you notice the absence of commercial buying activity right over here. Yeah, they don't want any part of those prices. They, they were very happy to be by all the, the big buyers down here, but right now yeah. they don't want nothing to do with it. And it's interesting also that we came all the way back up to the low of the highest price we've had in history, which was a long-term resistance point that we projected many, many months ago. So again, these markets, of course they could always go higher based on weather, but for now these yeah. moves are over. Uh, what about uh, looking at the coffee and the sugar, the softs? So the coffee. I would imagine my guess is going to be that the commercials are not interested in any of these commodities after they've run up so far. Well, let's check out the coffee. So here's the coffee. Commercials were buyers for the better part of three years. Mm -hmm, right. We've had right here. So they're basically absent from the market. Yeah. What else did we want to look at? Sugar? Sugar. Yeah. They, it looks like they bought it 100 and they don't want any part of it at 150 or 170. That's correct. Let's check it out. A moment, please. One moment. Here's sugar. And here's the chart. So again, similar situation. Big buyers for a long time prior to mm -hmm. the market. Believe it or not, this is the highest sugar price we've had in a long time. So Again, and the cycle, if I'm correct, is just now bottoming. So we still have a ways to go. One thing let's not forget about, let's not forget about cocoa. Oh, okay. Because the cocoa market has some very good potential. Again, we want to see what commercials are doing. So here's the chart, cocoa chart. And again, commercials basically absent from the market. But the one thing I would point out is we are at a cyclical low right now. And if this cycle holds, we're going to see cocoa prices higher for the next several years, and it could be one of the sleepers. In other words, big surprise bull market for a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, in years past, um, it traded uh, 2,800 to 3,600, so they can go nuts when it goes nuts. Yeah, and let's look at this crazy market right here. Just one moment. This is the craziest of all of them. Let me bring it up on the screen. I would be shocked if they were buying up at the high prices on lumber, but you never know. <laughs> well, here's the lumber chart. Yeah. And again, they did all the buying over here. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, no part of this market right here, but here's the interesting part about it. Another low coming in sometime in 2021, 2022. We'll have to wait a year for that to happen. But right now, one of the craziest markets I've ever seen. How about on the uh, stock indexes? Uh, is there uh, activity by the commitment of traders or whatever the, uh, the commercials yeah. on that too? Yeah, I think you'll find this interesting. Let me just yeah. change. I'd love to know what they're doing in uh, the uh, NASDAQ versus the... Uh, Check it out. Commercial buying activity right before this run up. Mm -hmm. Even now, just a little bit. Let me just make this chart bigger. Just a little bit of buying activity right over here. So again, commercials were definitely on the right side of this market and still are. They're not doing any new significant buying right now, but right, right. The way commercial activity is they do their buying before the move happens, and then once the move starts, they back off. And let's look at the Nasdaq. Yeah, there are some who think that July we're going to get a pretty significant pullback. So, the, you know, their lack of buying could be an indicator of that. You bet. Hang on a second, please. Let me just change the chart. And if we drop, maybe then we'll see some more activity after if there's a correction, you know. So check this out. What do you think? Yeah. Pretty damn interesting. Commercials have been steadily net long the queues for a long time, even now. Yeah, well, that, well, that's where the, uh, that they think that's where the action's going to be, and a lot of people do. They think it's going to be they've been right. They've been absolutely right. Well, if you look at Amazon and Apple, they've had uh, the first half of the year they were up like two and three or four percent or something like that, while the whole market was up fourteen, and that's like uh, two Ferraris uh, going slow behind the Volkswagens. You know what I mean? Right, for at sure. At some point, you want to bet on the Ferrari getting some speed, right? What did we forget? Did we forget crude oil? Yeah. Well, no, we didn't forget. We got. We got let's a grocery check. store list here. We go. All right, let's look at crude. Yeah. Here's crude. So the commercials have no reason to be buying crude because they got plenty of it to sell. Yeah. So here's the chart. Commercials haven't been buyers in crude in a long time, but check this one out. Natural gas. This I was going to say, that's the one. And I've, I've been watching LNG as the uh, stock of choice, you know, Chenier. And uh, that's been pretty steady. Yep, commercials have been steady buyers yeah. for the last several months, definitely on the long side of this market. But the market, of course, has a spotty history because every time it gets up into that range over here, it, it seems to die. So it's done that for a long time. But now, right the, whole, the whole world was looking for the uh, 10 year to go to two and two and a half percent. And we're going to have this big uh, uh, Ray Dalio still talking about this big problem we're going to have with debt and this and that, but that's not the way the prices are going. So what is treasury bonds? Uh, how, are, are, are the commercials uh, buying treasury bonds uh, for the last uh -huh. month or two while the world's been selling them? You're going to love this. Check this out. Have they been buying or what? There you, there you go. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Yep. They've been big buyers expecting lower rates, and so far they've been right. And especially in the euro dollar short term, let me show that to you. Let me get that chart. Hang on one second. Well, that also can tell you that if you're buying fixed income uh, and these rates are going to drop, you could make some money on that side of your portfolio. Sure could. So especially here, duration. Yeah. Here is the monthly chart for euro dollar interest rate futures. Big buyers before this big up move over here, which means mm -hmm. low interest rates are futures. And right now with a theoretical limit of 100, which would be zero interest rates, they're still buying for the small amount they can milk out of this market. What are they doing with the dollar index? I would imagine uh, they're probably buying that down at 89 and well, the whole world is shorting the dollar. I love the dollar index, it's been a beautiful market. Here's the chart. And they have been buyers just recently. Check it out. Yeah. Yeah, because everyone, everyone's looking for a big collapse in the dollar, and it's uh, up in the 92 area now. It's not out of the woods by any means, but it's certainly not collapsing. According to the charts, still in a bull trend. And there's a couple of good ETFs for the dollar. UUP for the dollar going up, and UDN for the dollar going down. Uh, turning towards uh, the meats. Uh, anything going on with live cattle, live hogs? Live hogs were going nuts for a while, but I think the bloom came off the rose. I'm not sure. The live hogs have had one of the biggest and best bull markets that I've ever seen. Right. Let me see if I can get the chart up here. One moment, please. 
Here's the hogs. One second. So there it is. Touched the record high or came close to the record high right over here. But again, you can see there's no commercial activity here. So this is simply a shortage of supply situation, probably having to do with the pandemic. But the bottom line is it's been a big, beautiful market that is now making a perfect cyclical peak right in the middle of the cycle. And cattle, been kind of a crazy market in cattle. Yeah. Who wants to eat cows anymore, right? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Beyond meat. Right. There's the cows. So the cycle's been acting pretty well, but again, no commercial activity here. The um, cotton market at $500 a point, is there anything happening there? Cotton that also is, had a pretty big pop. So they were probably buying in the 50s and the 60s. Now it's up near 80, 90, I think. Cotton has been a very predictable market. And you can hmm. see the buyers before the up move. Right. right here. Right. So it's still a bull market in, in the cotton. Uh, let's finish up with these metals and see uh, exactly what gold, silver, and platinum are doing. Because, you know, platinum, we uh, both know, is uh, fairly discounted in price, but it seems to be holding on to $1,000 uh, for dear life right now. As you can see, commercials want no part of the gold market. And silver. Here's the silver chart. And in silver, again, similar situation. They don't want any part of it. They were buyers right over here. Just a little bit, yeah. And of course in platinum, which has lost a lot of ground to gold over the last few years. Let's check out the chart, platinum chart. Still in a bullish cyclical trend. And palladium, a market, you gotta be really careful of it. It'll take your head off if you're wrong. There's a palladium and the chart shows that we made a cyclical low in palladium. And I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this turns out to be the strongest of all the metals because it's the one that most people can't trade or are afraid to trade. Can you uh, look at anything on some of the um, oil shares? Because you know some people are looking at OIH uh, for the, ex, you know, the um, exploration and producing uh, stocks, which the uh, SLB, the Schlumberger and Halliburton are two of the main guys. And uh, they've been lagging. They've been lagging. And they, that this is kind of like what the mining shares were telling me about gold. Don't believe in the oil run because uh, the, the oil shares are at a disparity to where they used to be when oil was at this price. So people are saying the oil shares are very cheap because they'll play catch up to the oil. What may very well occur is the oil will come down to where the oil shares are. Most likely it will. Here's the SLB weekly chart, still in a bull trend. Yeah. And Halliburton, another one of my favorites for the long term, should be a similar chart. There's Halliburton. So they're and, still hanging oh, in there. Oh, yeah. And OIH. Here's the OIH chart. And again, a similar chart to the others, looking pretty much the same. So they're in a bull, they're in a, certainly in a bull trend, but certainly not exactly uh, catching on fire, so to speak. So uh, just uh, reviewing, because we're at the midway part of the year, um, your feeling on the stock market for the second half of the year is, do you think we could get a nice shakeout? Because you know, one of the data points that I was told is that when the interest rates peak, within two to four months after the stock market peaks. So we peaked in March on the yields when we had that big run up in yields and um, it didn't peak in May, that would be two months, but the fourth month is July. So I'm very concerned that uh, somewhere in this 4,400, 4,350 area could be a turning point uh, more significant than people think. Do you see any, um, do you see anything uh, that would be indicating you know, what kind of volatility we could look at? In terms of the bigger picture cycles, we made a cyclical low a few months ago. And so I think the trend will continue basically higher. There's just too much money in terms of fundamentals. Yeah. Money looking for a home. And the, the only reasonable home they can find for it right now is the stock market. So unless the nature of the economic stimulus changes dramatically, we should continue to see higher stock prices. Yeah, there's no evidence of uh, 
of any everyone is talking about things slowing down and they're talking about um, you know tapering and they're doing a lot of talking 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 but uh, the money's still flowing out at 120 billion a month yeah. and um, and uh, like buffett says about uh, interest rates uh, being gravity to stocks well you know uh, the interest rates are certainly not being very much gravity as we go down to 135 on the 10 year. True enough. And one thing we should not forget is a good old buddy, Bitcoin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's throw that up there. Uh, Bitcoin. Uh, put you want to you, you use GBTC or do you want to just use the Bitcoin itself? I'm going to use the, the GDAX Bitcoin right over here. Hang on one okay. second. Here's the chart. And here's the monthly chart showing Bitcoin coming right down to long-term support where we recommend that a buy. Now look, I've got some basic fundamental issues with Bitcoin and all the cryptocurrencies because I don't think there's anything crypto about them. Um, I've got my doubts as to their authenticity. I have my doubts with the, the issue that's going on with Tether not having sufficient backing for their funds. I think ultimately it's going to be an Enron situation and I'm very worried about that. But right now, as long as the game is hot and it works and our technical indicators work extremely well on Bitcoin, I'm willing to play that game, but I don't trust it for the longer term. Um, and um, Ethereum? Pretty much the same. Ethereum is, I think, much more stable, not, not as a quote unquote stable currency, but in terms of the chart, let me show you the futures. Here's the Ethereum futures chart, which is conforming extremely well to the technical indicator. One moment, please. Here we go. In terms of trading, it's a much better market to trade. Here's the daily chart on futures. We've already had a buy setup, which would be two bars above the top of the channel, right. waiting for Williams to turn above its moving average, which would give us a buy. We issued a sell all the way back here. It's been in a downtrend, but we're getting close to a turn in the market. So don't be surprised if Ethereum actually becomes the cryptocurrency of choice for a lot of people. Even though you can buy fractional Bitcoin, and most people would much prefer to trade Ethereum. With these rates dropping, uh, a couple of um, ETFs that are kind of interesting, because they may have a heck of a lot of potential when they don't have that interest rate drag. One is ARKK, which is your innovative um, ETF out of Kathy Wood. Yeah, that's Kathy Wood. Well, here's the thing about Kathy Wood. Kathy Wood is willing to do things most people can't do, which is dollar cost average all the way down. Who right. cares if you get a 40% drawdown? If right. you've had a 150% increase, you don't care about a 40% drawdown. But the average person can't do that. No. Kathy's got money coming out. The, everything that's going out the front door is coming in to do the back door in terms of new funds. So right. again, people shouldn't just take a blanket recommendation and say, Kathy's buying uh, uh, Kratos Defense, let's buy it too. Just mm -hmm. go ahead and do the timing because you can't do what Kathy does. You don't have the money to do it unless you can dollar cost average. What about ARKG, uh, which is genomic? your uh, yeah, genomic revolution, which I think is better than ARKK. It certainly had, the, certainly had the best performance over the longer term. Here's the weekly chart, which is where we should be looking. So again, we had the big run up. We had the correction down. We are now out of that correction down and we actually have a buy. So if you can buy it down at the bottom of the channel, which would be around 77, 78 bucks a share, probably worth a shot. Yeah, that's an interesting thing. With regards um, uh, to a couple of questions that are on everybody's mind is, is you know, are we going to get um, uh, an inflation that's sticky? going into the end of the year, because we just saw rents went up 9.2% in the first six months of this year. And rents generally, when they go up, they don't go back down. So, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just wondering if your feeling is, because here's what I was thinking out loud and then see what you think on this. You know, when we did, last time had a big uh, problem with inflation that I really remember, which is when Volcker was there and Carter, and we had uh, the uh, inflation rate go up towards 10% and the interest rate was at 4% and that negative interest was a real problem. And then basically Volcker raised the rates up and put it back in the bottle. Right now we've got real uh, interest rates at about minus uh, 0.95. And basically, you know, if this inflation were to stick and the Fed's on the slow boat to normal, 
Isn't that a great setup for the metals to have a rather significant move to the upside? Oh, no doubt about it. I think at this stage of the game, inflation is not only inevitable, but it may also be unavoidable. So therefore, come late August, mid-September, start looking at these precious metals. And I think you want to accumulate them on the scale down if you can do that, because ultimately I think they're going much higher. I think the, the die has been cast. The Fed's backed into a corner. But again, I'm not an economist. I'm not a fundamentalist, but I know what the charts are saying. Right. And if you see, for some reason, commercials begin to be net buyers in any of the precious metals, that would be the key to the whole thing. And so in the second half, the, um, the tech sector, uh, especially the FANG stocks, might be uh, not a bad place to look around. Maybe okay. some of these ARC funds are not the worst place to look around. And then a little later in the summer, something that is a tangible asset that's still trading at a discount to where it has been might also be something as well. True. And check out Apple today. Okay. Here's the Apple chart. In a market that's been going steadily lower all day, yeah. it opens higher. It does not come down and trade yes in yesterday's range. Right. Closes toward the high of the day very strong stock and seasonally this is the right time of the year for apple to move significantly higher some of our seasonal trades have a 21 to 1, 21 to 1 profit to loss ratio at this time of the year meaning that for every one dollar that apple goes down at this time of the year the probability of 21 dollars on the upside on a ratio basis is extremely high so apple is definitely a good one to own well, you're going to be having, I'm sure, some kind of a webinar or meetings where you're going to go over the seasonality of all these markets and also some of your insights onto where you think uh, their opportunities might be. So how can people uh, get a hold of you? And, and do you have any an announcement on any kind of an offer or a meeting that you're going to be having? I'm going to be speaking at the Wealth 365 conference and next week. I'm going to be speaking at the Money Show next week. So all of these are opportunities to see what I've got. So if you want to find out more about what I'm going to be doing, go to my website. It's all indicated right over there. There's, there's a cycles webinar coming up. I believe there's a seasonal webinar coming up as well. And uh, where is the uh, money show uh, this time? It's virtual. Oh, it's virtual. That's better. Everybody's gone virtual. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, well, people don't want to go to those big hotels and start uh, rubbing shoulders with people they never met, you know? I don't want anybody coughing on me. <laughs> All right. As usual, Jake, it's excellent to hear your viewpoints. And uh, again, with the commodity volatility, it's interesting to get your insight on that as well. And um, I'm sure um, we'll be able to get together before uh, not too long. And uh, maybe we could get something uh, as we get closer to the end of the summer uh, to see how your timing is feeling on the seasonality of the gold turn or the silver turn. It'd be right. very interesting. Yeah, very interesting to hear your uh, point of view as we get to the end of the summer. And yours as well. Thank you very much. Great to talk to you. Okay, always uh, good. I'm going to turn it back over to uh, to David for the optionprofessor.com. If you go to the website, you can get our uh, weekly newsletter that we come out and we give a review of all these markets and where we think opportunity might be as well. So that's optionprofessor.com. And then throw your email in there and you're all set. Again, thank you very much to Jake Bernstein. It's a pleasure. It's a treat always to talk to Jake. Can't wait for the end of the summer where we can talk again. And uh, I'm going to throw it back to David right now. All right, thanks guys. A uh, ton of good inf information today. So uh, just a quick reminder for everyone, be sure to subscribe to Timing Research on YouTube and your favorite podcast app, or you can also just go to timingresearch.com to get access to uh, the archive of this show as soon as I can get it posted, as well as any past shows and events. They're, they're all there permanently. Um, also on Thursday, we're gonna have a special episode of Analyze Your Trade with Sonny Harris. And uh, Sonny actually um, was one of the people who submitted a uh, stocks for the uh, survey for today's event. And she actually wrote a note to, to, to Jake. I'm gonna read this real fast. So uh, she, she wrote, hi, hi Jake, you may not realize it, but you were my first trading mentor. <laughs> uh, I, I read uh, short-term futures trading years ago and worked quite a bit with your MACD ADX strategy. From there, I jumped 
uh, it was from there that I jumped off to design my own Sunny Bands indicator and strategies. And thank you, she said. So oh, that was from Sunny Harris. <laughs> so, thank you, Sunny. Much appreciated. And so, I can throw in a little bit. Uh, I used to read Commodity Perspectives by oh, Jay oh, Bernstein. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was the former Bible on all the charts. Because you're making me feel like an old fart. <laughs> <laughs> you're the Babe Ruth of technical analysis. That's what you are. <laughs> Thank you. Guys. Right. So, uh, yeah, Sunny will be on Thursday's show, so uh, everyone can get access to that. Just go to uh, timingresearch.com slash live, for, and that'll be at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern as well. And uh, so just want to thank my guests again for today, Jake Bernstein of trade-futures.com and the option professor of optionprofessor.com. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Good trading. <laughs>